shortest distance between two words. In this problem, we have a list of words and two words. We have to find the shortest distance that occurs between these two words anywhere in the list. These words can be present any number of times in any permutation. In the first example, here you have can and you have salt. That's W1 and that's W2. The only possible distance here is this one, which is four units. Now, if you take the example number two, the word one is problem. Problem occurs twice. Word two is solved, which occurs once here. So there are two possible distances. One is this two units and the other one is this one unit. So this is the answer. So in this video, we're going to look at the possible algorithms to solve this problem. And uh, if you want to solve this on your own, you can pause the video now. All right. So now we're going to look into the solutions. The first basic thing that comes to mind while solving this problem is the brute force approach. How would we solve this by doing an exhaustive search on all the, on everything in this uh, words list? So the one thing that we can do is we can run for loop within a for loop. So we know that the word one is, for example, here problem. I'm going to use this example. So word one is problem, word two is solved. So what we can do is we can run first loop to scan for the first word. So the first loop begins with the very first letter, the very first word, and it goes from left to right. And the moment it scans, it finds the word, first word, which is problem. It stops there. Then we run the second loop, which is going to run once again from this till we find the word salt. When you find salt, you stop there, you compute the distance, this distance. And then you continue forward. You have some running variable where you can, let's say, I'm calling it, let's say result. And you store this value in the result. Let's say you say, okay, the distance is this was two units. And then you continue forward. Once this second uh, loop has reached the end, that means we have covered everything for this particular problem here. So now this loop can continue forward. Let's get rid of this. So now that means that this problem is taken care of. So we continue the first for loop again till we find problem again here. At this point, we're going to run the second loop from the beginning till we find this solved here. And then once again, we compute the distance and compare it with the current distance. If D is less than result, then result becomes D essentially. So that's the algorithm, the brute force algorithm can be. So let's just quickly write some pseudo code for that. So what I'm going to do is so open my text reader and just quickly write some pseudo code here. So the first one I'm calling this brute force. In the brute force, first thing you have is words, then you have W1 and W2. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize the result, which is going to be some kind of an infinite value. Okay, let's just call it infinite. Now, once this is infinite, then uh, what we can do is we can write first for loop, which is I'm going to say for x in for x from one to words dot length. You can call it zero as well, but I'm just writing pseudo code. So okay, let's keep it this way. So from 
x for x from word uh, zero to words dot length, and now we're gonna say if words the the word that is present on this index is equals to equals to w one, then only we need to write go to the second loop. Otherwise, just keep looping here. So I'm just going to say for y from zero to words dot length. You say only if word words of this y equals equals w two, then we need to do something here. So in this situation, we have in the first loop, we looped till we found this such condition to be true. Once this condition was true, then we wrote another for loop within that to scan if we can find the second word. Once we have found the second words, it time it's time to calculate the distance between the two words. Okay, the distance between the two words can be given by y minus x, and you can take the absolute of that because these y and x can be in any order. So the current result is infinite. So you can say the result is equals to the minimum of this or the current result. You can just say that, and in the end you can return the result. <clears throat> so it, this this can be kind of this can be the brute force uh, solution in which you are searching everything. In the worst case scenario, so what is the time and space complexity for this? In the worst case scenario, let's look at this real quick. I'm just going to copy this and paste it. This loop is going to run n times. This loop is going to run n times. And if if the length of this word is n, then this loop is going to run n time. And this comparison is going to happen n time. Now, if this condition is true, then this loop is going to run some number of combinations of this. So some function of and you can say maybe you can take an average of that, but it's going to run n times. And in the worst case scenario, worst case, this upper bound, it, it will have to run for every single match here. Right? So that can be n square. So that's what you're calculating, the upper bound. And similarly, this will be n square and this will be n square. So that, that gives a complexity of O of n square. We are not taking into the account the this complexity of comparing two words. So the, just by the length of the words, the complexity can be n square in the worst case scenario. Okay, you can you can compute a tighter bound, but we, we are fine right now. Moment. Now, how can we improve? We can improve by looking at the fact that we are doing this comparison uselessly. Every time we find a match for the word one, we are essentially looking through the whole array again, whole array of the word again to find the W2. This is not needed, this unnecessary work. So let's look at the approach number two. This approach is called the sliding window approach. Okay, let me just copy paste the words again. If you want to understand what sliding window is, you can look at one of my previous videos in which I have explained array techniques. I'll put the link in the description. All right, so let's begin. In the sliding window, what you do is you start with two pointers. Let's just call them, let's say left and right. Let's just call them x, y. X represents the left win left border of the window and Y represents the right border of window. Okay, and these X and Y will move to different indexes based on certain conditions. So we are going to write one for loop. Okay, let's just call this for loop is going to be the variable, the iterator is going to be I. So when I reaches here, once again, suppose the W1 is problem. 
and W2 is solved. Okay, when when I reaches here, neither of the words are matched. So we don't do anything. When then I reaches here, nothing to be done. I reaches here, yes. Now we have matched a word problem. So if we match the first word, then we move the left border. So the left border comes here. But still, there's nothing to be done at this point of time because the Y is still not initialized. So there is no word, there is nothing to compute. Then you come here, then you come here. As soon as you come here, you realize that the salt is here. That means Y needs to come here. So now you have a valid window. The window is this. And what is the length of the window is two. Okay. So at this point, what you're gonna do is record the distance as two. And if we can just write this as a in a tabular form. So let's say I, when I was zero, this was uh, nil, nil, and this, let's say, is positive infinity <clears throat> at this point of time. When i was one, so that's the indexes, z sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. When i was one, the x was still nil because there's nothing to be done, y is nil, and this is infinity. When this is two. At this point, X becomes two and Y is still nil and this is infinity. Then this is three, this is two, this is nil and infinity. And when you come to four, then you realize that this is Y is now four and the shortest distance now is two. Then you come to five and then once again, when you come to five, it matches the W1. So what happens is that now X will move to this location, X will become five. Y is still four. So that's a new window. So once you reach this window, you can compute the size by doing four minus five, Y minus X and absolute on that. So that's one. So you will come up with an answer that the shortest distance between them is one. So you can just write one for loop and get this and solve this. Now let me, write the pseudo code. If you're looking for the actual code, it's on my GitHub page and I'll put the link in the description, but let's go to the pseudo code part. Okay. I'm going to solve the same problem using sliding window. And once again, I have words W1 and W2. Okay. Now, first of all, I'm going to initialize the result as let's say infinite. Now we're going to say, uh, we're going to define the two windows, two window borders. So the, let's say the left border is X and we call it, uh, suppose something like nil and the Y border is also nil at the moment. Then we're going to write one for loop. We're going to say for X from one to words dot length once and once again, I'm writing pseudo code. So don't worry about this one. Okay. This just means the first index. So you have this and once you are, once you are in this situation, you can check that if this is the first word, if the index, if this is the first word, then you move the X, then you move, sorry, I just call it I, my mistake. If the words of I is equals to W1, then essentially you make X I. Similarly, if the words of Y I equals equals W2, in that case, you make Y as I. So these are the windows adjusting operations. Now at the end of the loop, you can just check. You can always keep computing the distance. You can say both if X and Y are not nil, are both not nil, or you can just write like this, okay? If X not equals to nil and Y 
not equals to nil, then essentially you can compute the distance, which is the result is equals to minimum of current result or the absolute of y minus x. And then in the end, you can just return the result. So that can be a sliding window solution. Let's come, let's look at the time and space complexity for this one real quick. So this is all, these are all one-time operations. That is all good. Now let's look at this one. This loop is gonna execute n times. This comparison will happen n time, okay? And this will happen some fraction of n time, but the worst case scenario, n time, cannot be more than that. This is n time, this is upper bound n time, and then this upper bound n time and n time, right? n times. So in the end, this, all of this can happen some k n number of times, and hence the time complexity is O of n in this case, right? So we have solved this problem using the sliding window in linear time, okay? Once again, we are not, com we are not counting the, we are counting the time complexity of this. This will also have some time complexity based on how big the words are, that long will, it will take to be uh, for for it to be compared, but for us, we're just concerned with our algorithm, our part of the algorithm. So we looked at this problem of shortest word distance. Right? Let me just copy this again, and we solved this in brute force with O of n square, and we looked at two solutions for this. The first one was. brute force let's compare everything with everything else and that's o of n square number of operations and the second we looked at sliding window which is using two pointers that both begin with the same direction this was o of n okay so those are the two algorithms now if you want to find these problem the, the, these problems are there on lead code i will put the link in the description the my actual solutions i have them on the github and i will put the link in the descriptions as well, description youtube description as well so you guys can check that out let me know if you have any questions thank you